Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So today, I'm gonna to be making some potting mix. So I've got this coconut core. This stuff is great. One big brick like this, I think is like, I don't know, I wanna say like 12 bucks or something. And it makes more than, once this swells with water, probably makes about three bags filled of regular potting mix. So it's a lot less expensive. Now there's no nutrients in this, so you might wanna add some either granule fertilizer or compost. Now, if you do granule fertilizer, you're gonna to wanna to add some microbiome into here so you do want some compost honestly it's best but if you don't have compost then you can add we don't want to use compost because lately compost from the store has been found to have a certain compound in it that comes from the grazing of cows it's called grazon is the blanket term for a couple different compounds that are a herbicide and those last through the gut of the cow and for like for five years they've got like a five-year half-life so it'll destroy your garden um, if it has it in there and there's been a lot of that stuff in some of the cow manure that you can get from the store now you can of course get mushroom compost and some other kind of compost that don't have cow manure and those will more than likely not have this stuff in it that's more expensive so so all i'm gonna do is cut this open Got a little bit of water in this wheelbarrow here from last night. It rained pretty hard. So all we're gonna do is place it in the water and that's gonna soak up that water pretty quickly. Put it in on the lowest side there because it's deeper on that side. And we're gonna let that soak up for give it about like 20 minutes and I'll probably have to add a lot more water to it. That's not enough really, but I'll bring the hose over. And then I've got some compost I'm gonna to add to it. Um, finished compost, my own compost bins that I know is, doesn't have any of that in it. I also am gonna add some perlite, which I'm gonna grab in a minute once this soaks up. It's halfway filled it up and you can see how this swelled up on one side. So let's turn it around and let's get it to start soaking up on the other side as well. And I am gonna to have to add quite a bit of water here. You can see how this got much taller and it now is ready to start breaking apart. I'm sure there's still some dry spots right in the center, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So you can see once this soaks up the water, it, it really isn't hard anymore. It's easy to just kind of scrape off. So I'm gonna take this brick that is still a little bit hard and I'm going to put it in here because I'm going to make two separate potting mixes plus it's not going to all fit in here okay so this is going to be what I put all the compost in however I plan on planting some potatoes which do not like a lot of nutrients so I'm actually not going to put any of the compost in this one I'm going to put earthworm castings though I've got this big bag of perlite not that expensive and you don't use a ton but quite a bit in there. We'll mix this up. Now this stuff looks like styrofoam, but it's not. Perlite is little volcanic rocks, I believe. And I was watching a video on, I want to say, MI Gardener that was talking about the different components of making your own. I used to always think that perlite added the ability to keep the moisture in the potting mix, but it actually does not. It adds drainage, apparently according to him. Now, not 100% sure if that's true. Uh, he said vermiculite is actually the one that holds the moisture. I used to always think that this added moisture holding capabilities, but apparently not. So I have this pile of compost that actually I had recently done a video where I dumped it out because I was needing to clean out my chicken coop and needed another bin. This is mostly done. I mean, it's turned into dirt at the bottom. It doesn't really smell anymore. It smells like dirt, but there is a lot of eggshells in here. So we're just gonna pull a little bit of this out. Not a lot, but we'll break that apart and get that in there. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. I grabbed the pitchfork thinking I would need it, but I just use my hands. Kind of gross, but so this is gonna add a lot of really good micronutrients on top of the macro nutrients. I want to break it apart quite a bit so it's not like one clump of compost and of course I'll be washing my hands afterwards 
this is kind of gross. And it rained a lot last night, so it's a little bit slimy still. <laughs> but I probably should have waited for this to dry, pulled out some, let it dry. It would have uh, been a little easier to mix this, that compost, I mean. That is well mixed up. Go ahead and take this over. If you want to add some extra fertilizers, which I might do depending on what I plant. Look at that big spider. Big jumping spider. Looks like he's going to jump on me. Pretty little guy. Those jumping spiders are pretty. They have nice and blue and yeah. All right. So I'm going to wash off all that and I'm going to fill this with water. So this soaks it up because now I got to make the mix for these potatoes that I'm going to plant in here. Let that soak that up for a few minutes. It is still pretty hard in there. So once that soaks all that up, should be good to go. You can see the water just drawing into it. There's like an actual river of water moving towards this here. Let's turn this over and get the bottom part soaking up. Well, that's moving quickly, even quicker now. All right, this has soaked up most of that water. Let's see how this looks. All right, this has soaked up most of that water. Let's see how this looks, if there's any dry spots still. And it does feel like there is. So we'll have to do one more coat of water, but let's get most of this moist stuff out. All right, so to this, I am adding, oh, I dumped some. Probably the rest of this bag of perlite. I want a fair amount. So since this is for potatoes, I don't want a lot of nitrogen. I want them to focus on root development since you are eating the tubers, which come from the roots. So you don't want to add too much nitrogen, but I am going to add bone meal, which is all phosphorus, which is good for root development. So I'm going to sprinkle a fair amount of that in. There we go. It's quite a bit. And that takes a while for it to break down actually. And then I am going to add some earthworm castings, which back here it says total nitrogen 0.5, not even one. So I'm not too worried about that. What this is adding is the micronutrients. So there we go. Maybe a little more since this is quite a bit of mix. All right, so let's go ahead and mix this around. There is the mix for root veggies, and I could also plant like carrots in this and anything that you don't necessarily want a lot of nitrogen. Truth being said, I probably could have put a little bit of compost in this. The worm castings basically did the same thing, which is all those micronutrients from the compost. They also have microorganisms like mold and stuff that is really good for helping to break down a lot of the fertilizers that you put in. If you're gonna be using organic fertilizers, they have to break down. Otherwise, liquid fertilizers can work as well if you don't have that, but it's always good to add that in. So let's go ahead and fill these up. See how much this made. So there we go. I got two of them filled halfway, a little more than halfway actually. So this will fill one and a half bags. Plus I've got all this. So I would say three bags total is kind of how much I produced out of this. If I would have add more compost, then of course I would have gotten more. Could also add like bulk and filler with things like wood chips. So three bags of these, these are 10 gallon. And I would need probably maybe two total bags of premium potting mix, which for good stuff is 10 to $12 at least. I've seen some in the $25 range, so it depends on which ones you get. But I'm gonna actually add a little bit more from here, even though this has the compost in it, because I mean, a little bit of compost is fine in here. It might actually be good for it. I don't want a lot. I got these two filled pretty much to the brim here, and this will get me enough to be able to fill one more, almost that height. So again, three bags, and I am overfilling these because I'm planting potatoes and I want a lot of room for those roots to grow. Normally you don't necessarily have to fill these pots this this high. And by the way, these 
cloth pots I got for super inexpensive. I want to say it was $20 and you get 10 of them. They're like two bucks each, roughly. I'll put a link in the description section so you can check them out. I might be off by a few bucks, but I think it's roughly around that price. I'm going to get those potatoes and I'm going to go ahead and plant them right now. I've got these potatoes that we didn't eat and they went to sprouting. So these are going to be perfect. Once I saw that I had a couple sprouts off of them, I set them in my windowsill and this one might be rotting. I'm not sure. We'll see if this one goes, but I um, sat on my windowsill so they get light, but let's go ahead and plant them. I got two of the whites and two of the purples. I'm not sure it matters, but we'll put them like so. Might want them a little deeper. I think, I think they go quite a bit deeper. I want to say. There we go. And then of course I am planting with that with the sprout up. And then we're going to do the same thing here. All right, so I'm gonna move these over here. There's a good spot for them, I think. They're quite heavy because they're filled with water. Normally I would water all this in, but I don't think it's necessary right now since that's really wet coconut core. Probably have to water them tomorrow though. Now, I'm gonna plant this probably tomorrow. I'm gonna let it sit, it'll be fine.